Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're looking at the world of unfinished projects. These are projects that I don't plan to do anything else with so if you can do anything with them download them and give them a new lease of life. Well let's get started. Before we start I know I've not posted for a little while it is exam season I am a teacher it's my full-time job as exam season nearly finished, there'll be a lot more content coming onto the channel very, very soon. I've got some really great projects in the works. So thank you for supporting the channel during this sort of quiet time. It will pick up very, very soon. So starting with project number one, this was actually a game jump entry. So you pick up the light switch and the theme was light out and you have to go back and get the star. Now what made this really tricky was you had to remember the path. And as the levels went on, it would get harder and harder. So now we've got some spikes and we've got to remember where those spikes are. If not, the light breaks. Now in total, I created 15 different levels. There is 16 here, but the last one is actually just in end screen, telling you how well you've done. And this was really, really easy to create. So all I've got is I've got my game layer that's got my sprites on and then just a background color of black, which I just turned on and off that would hide anything in white and then just some nice effects to add on. So this was part of Tri Jam. Tri Jam is one of my favorite game jams because you can do it every weekend and it only takes three hours of your time, wherever you can squeeze those three hours in your weekend. And this one was a third place entry for me. So really, really happy. In terms of the event sheet, nothing too exciting going on here. Just when you turn the switch on, change the background color to be black so it's hard to see and then do the reverse if you go back to a new level so make it back to white and just destroy the player if they touch any of the spikes. Really, really great game, really, really simple, but outside of this game jam, I'm never gonna use this project again. Speaking of tri jam, here is another tri jam entry. So I've been taking apart a bit more in tri jam. I really, really do like it. And at the moment where I'm spending so much time talking, recording videos for my work, Coming back and just making a game my own time is really, really nice. So this one was called Odd Things and this was based off the game. This game only has one level, really, really great flash game. And the idea was this is all you have to do is get the odd thing in the pen. Each day there'll be a challenge to make that much harder. So in this case, there is now a gate and the little hint you get is press R to restart and the gate opened and it gets harder and harder and the titles give you some sort of idea of how to solve it. So in this case, the arrow keys no longer work. And because it's called such a drag, I can now drag the odd thing about. So try this one for yourself. It's really, really fun. This was also a really great example of using somebody else's art pack. So this was one from Open Game Art. I can't remember who it was exactly. I'll add it in when I edit. Um, but this was really great because I spent actually the first sort of 40 minutes of this gem actually making this level up. And I could use this design for all the levels following after. I really like it when you can actually just not focus on the artwork and just focus on the game mechanics. You can somebody else's art, really, really fun little challenge. And this came out really, really well. Outside of the 13 levels that I made for this, it became a bit tricky to think of where this would go much further without just introducing more silly and wacky ideas. And I decided that's it. After this game jam, that's as far as I want to take this one. But again, try this out. It's fun to play. It's also on itch, so I'll leave a link for that in the description as well. And if you want to do anything with it, then please do. So we looked at two quite polished examples. This is one that is not that polished. So this was a game called Combat. This was a two player game where you could pick up power ups. You could then fire those power ups at the other player, which would stun them. And the idea was, is you had to get to the end of the level. The fastest person wins. Once you got to the end, it then entered this build phase where there'll be a number of different cards that you could pick to change the level. So for instance, you could put a missile power up at the top there. And the idea was that every single time you played the game, you could change what the level looked like, adding this element of challenge and replayability to the game. Um, so as well as the rockets, I also introduced a saw blade. So there we go, we've got the saw blade now. So if we can place the saw blade, you can see there's some areas where you can't place the saw blade. And again, if I was to place this here, that really changed the level now because I can't go that way anymore. So instead, I'd have to maybe go this way around the level and get out this way, which I fell off the edge, but you get the idea. So that was the idea behind this, some sort of platform challenge map that every time you played it, you could add and change it and just something really fun to play with a friend. 
As you can see, this one is nowhere near as polished as the other two examples, but the idea was that you had an array with the different items in, so pick one of those items at random. Those items were then linked to these different cards, which I just knocked up in PowerPoint of all things. And then I just had some different groups for player one's controls, player two controls, the wall jump logic, so I could jump around. Some confused logic there, so what happens if the player gets hit if they're confused. I then had an event sheet for the power-ups, so when you picked up a PowerPoint and you when you grabbed a power-up, it will be saved as missile, and if you picked a different one, it will change it to that power-up, so you can have one at a time. And then obviously some sort of check to see if you fired it. Apart from that, the rest of the logic is quite simple. If a player gets to the end, it counts the level as complete. Once both players get to the end or die, then the level restarts, and then you'd add a point to the player that won. Um, but again, really, really great idea. I just got bored of the concept really quickly. I came across some bugs that was really annoying me. Uh, I was working on some other stuff as well that I found a bit more exciting. So this unfortunately got abandoned, but again, try it out for yourself. Another project that didn't get too far off the ground was marbles. So the idea was this was that you could make tunes by having a marble full. And the marbles will land on these platforms here. Now these platforms you can move around freely. You could change the property of the block that you're interacting with, so we can change the angle. We can also change the note. And then, like I said, we could put this back into position. And again, we could put multiple of these in and try and play a little bit of tune. And again, small adjustments to try and make it line up the way you want it to. Again, really fun to mess about with. I did try to implement a shot, but I never got around to actually doing that stage yet. Um, but the idea was that you would get your marbles into a basket and every time it hits a block you could get a multiplier and there'll be switches that you can do and almost like this um, Rube Goldberg machine sort of effect. Um, I thought it'd be quite fun but again I got about this far with it and then probably went on to another project but that happens a lot. So try this one out for yourselves, really really fun, see what music you can make, can you make an actual tune that we recognise um, and again if you can do anything with this, let me know how you get on. Now we move to my final project, and I'm really upset to put this one in this video because I genuinely thought I'd get this working, uh, but this is Mario Maker. And I was working on this for quite a long time, so let's have a look at what it does first. So first of all, we can place blocks. Not very exciting, but there you go. And you can go between a range of different blocks, and you can obviously delete blocks as well. So that's just done by left and right clicking. We can move Mario around and we can move the flag around. So I've got these little shortcuts to grab the flag and to go to Mario. Makes it getting around a bit easier. We can use the arrow keys to fly around the map so we can look around. And most importantly, we can play our level. So we're running around and again, we can touch the flagpole and slide down to the bottom. And then the game goes back to the beginning. Now, those features are really, really cool, but they're nothing too exciting. The more exciting options are at the very top. Bin, I'm not going to talk about. It deletes the level. There you go. Save and load. So let's talk about saving first of all. When you save, you give the file a name. So let's call it test. Hit save. And I've now got a JSON file called test. So what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to, well, let's delete this level. And let's just put some random stuff in. So there's my new random level. I can actually load that particular level back up by going to my file section. And if we give it a second, there is my level back. So I can save and load. But again, that's not even the most exciting bit. The most exciting bit is the upload and the user's levels. And this was the bit I couldn't get working properly. So if we do an upload first, no idea how well this is going to work. Let's call it video test. It's been a while since I've looked at this. Game design with Riley and random stuff. So I'm going to press upload. And that is it. It should have uploaded. And what's happening is we're actually converting this into a JSON file. So it's recording the X and Y position of every block of Mario and the flag and then it's going to upload that level. The same way that we do with the save and load, but we turn that to a file. If we go to users levels, it will have a list of all the levels that are available to play 
including the video test that we've just done. So let's see if any of these will actually load. So this one's not loading. We'll try a couple more. The main problem with this was actually loading the levels and saving them. They didn't always work. There seems to be a size problem that if they're a certain size, they wouldn't load. And in the end, I gave up trying to get this working. Now, I've just tried messing about with it and unfortunately I can't get the user levels to work. They were very temperamental when I did have them sort of working, but it all came down to how big the file was. I managed to get an earlier build working with very small files, but you could only place around about 20 or 30 blocks. So I came up with a method of being able to extract and send bigger JSON files over the internet, but that's temperamental and doesn't quite work. Now, if you're wondering where that data is going, it is going to a Google Sheet. So it's got an ID, which is automatically generated. It's got the level name that you put in. It's got the description that you put in, the author, the date is added automatically. And then the same JSON file that we're saving and loading, which does work on a local level, and then sending to a Google Sheet instead. And this gives you a maximum characters of 50,000 characters, which to be fair can create some very, very large levels. So this was the process of getting it done. Obviously it didn't quite work. And then in order to work with Construct, it's actually running some scripts behind the spreadsheet. I'm not going to go into detail with these, but if you want to learn how to actually do some online leaderboards, such as through Google Sheet, I've got a video on my Patreon on how to do that bit more complex than some of the stuff that we normally do in Construct but again if you're interested in that sort of thing definitely worth a watch. But that is it for today's video sorry it's just a quick one today I just want to make sure there was a video uploaded because it has been a little while. Try out these projects for yourself comment which was your favorite and let me know have you got any unfinished projects for yourself maybe we could do an episode where I try finish your unfinished projects but until then I'll see you in the next video.